Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we will be looking at SQL wildcards. Now, SQL wildcards are used for fuzzy data in your database. Data that you're not uh, pretty precise about or you're not sure about, but you want to be able to retrieve, then you want to use the wildcards. Now, to use the wildcards in SQL, you have to use the like operator. Now, because wildcards are used for data that you're not sure about, you typically do not want to be using that a lot on a large data sets because it tends to be slow, okay? It takes time to process. However, if there is no other way out, then you want to use the wildcats. If you know the exact data you're looking for, wildcats should be your last resort. Before we go into SQL Server, let's look at the symbols uh, used in wildcats, okay? The most popular one is a percentage symbol. Now, you, I have here that it's a substitute for zero or more characters. It can be used to uh, check the beginning of the string, the, the end of the string, or something that is contained in the string. And then we also have the uh, square brackets. It is used to specify sets or ranges of characters that match. Okay, so you are, you are using the square brackets to give a range of values. Okay, there is also the carrot symbol uh, or the exclamation sign. Those are used to specify results that do not match whatever you have selected, okay? For the, the, the specified items that I have here, if I use the carrot symbol, then only show me the records that do not match those uh, specified items. And then we also have the underscore. That is used to substitute uh, a single character or a space, okay? So it is used to mark an empty value where we know there is something that not sure what, okay? I will show you how to use that. So let's get into SQL Server and then connect to our database. Now for this demo, we are going to use AdventureWorks because we are not going to modify or any object. We are only going to retrieve data, okay? So go to AdventureWorks 2019 and click on New Query. And let's get started with Wildcats. So um, let me quickly go into my uh, GitHub repository where I have uh, what did we do is query language. Let me copy a few things because we are going to do the search with some of the um, SQL queries that we already have. I'm going to start like this. Let me just give it a header. This is wild cards. Okay, these comments are from the previous video or demo, but hold on. Okay, so um, we are going to use the job title for this demo. Uh, we are going to use it to uh, help us do some wildcat searches. So I'm going to clear this particular one and let me just use the ones that we have the specific column selected. We don't need everything. Yeah, this is enough. So the first thing that we want to do is to go with the percentage symbol. Remember, I said this is the most popular one that is used. So I'm going to start with that. Um, number one, like that. We want to see all the job titles where um, the title starts with R. Okay, so I'm going to do a lot of copy and paste here. And then I will do my where clause, okay? Now over here, we are saying where the job titles, right? So I have to put in the job title here in the where clause. And then I said that to use a wildcat symbol, you have to do the like operator. We said we want to see where the, jobs, the job title starts with R. So you type in your R, sorry, you put in your, your quotation, you, you type your R, and then you end it with a percentage symbol. Okay, percentage symbol. Basically, give me R and anything after the R. That is what it's doing here. So let's run this and see how it goes. Okay, so per the, the table we are working with, these are the only job titles that starts with R. So let's try another one that ends with R rather than starting with an R. You see where the percentage symbol was placed? Over here, because we are seeing that where the job title all ending uh, all job titles ending with R, we will replace the R's position and put it after the percentage symbol. Okay, we want everything that ends with an R. So let's run that and see. Okay, so you see that we have the officer, we have the manager, designer, engineer. So yeah, we got about 56 records. We have the buyer, the purchase manager, and all that, okay? So just see how we are placing the percentage symbol depending on what we are hoping to achieve. At the beginning, we wanted to see where the 
the, the job title started with R, so the R came first. But then now we are seeing how uh, all the job titles that ends in R, so we have the percentage symbol first. Let's see another one where um, where the job title contains chief. Let's say we want the chief finance officer or something. Let's copy this, paste, and then over here we are going to remove the R. Now we need two percentage symbols, okay? And then we will type in the word that we are trying to find. And it's chief, okay? So we want all job titles that contains the word chief. So you see that the chief is in between two percentage symbol. Anything that is uh, before the chief or anything after the chief, we are fine. So as long as it contains chief, we are good. So execute that. Now we have only three records where we, um, we have the, the word chief in there. Chief executive officer, financial officer, and then the assistant to the chief financial officer, okay? So now that we've seen how to use a percentage symbol, let's go on to see how to use the square brackets, okay? I have a, a title here using the square brackets to give a range of values, okay? So now we are going to see how to retrieve all job titles that begins with the characters M through P, okay? So I'm going to copy this. Now, because we are saying job titles that begins with the characters M through P, we are going to uh, make some changes here. We are saying begins with M through P. So regardless, the percentage symbol will have to be at the end. We are looking for M through P, okay? But then because it's a range of values, that is where we put in the square bracket. Okay. So we want the beginning to be either M, N, O, or P. And then anything after that, that is what the percentage symbol here represents. So this is a combination of two wildcard symbols. We have the percentage and we have the square bracket. So let's see how that works. Okay. So the results are 198 rows. We have the M, makes sense. We have the P. We don't have, do we have anything like O? Okay, we have N, N as well. So it's working as expected. Let's say we want to be very specific, okay? Instead of going with M through P, what if we want specific uh, characters that starts with a job title? Let's say we want to see all jobs with either a C, an O, or S. How do we go about that? So I'm going to copy this, and with the same approach, I'm just going to replace the dash symbol with comma, okay? And I'm going to type in my C, what was that? C, O, and what? S, okay? So we want to be specific for job titles that starts with either C, O, or S, this is how you type it. Okay, so now we see that we have chief executive officer, we have the senior tool designer, so we have the CS working. I don't know if there is any job title with O, maybe we don't, but that's that's why we don't see it. So we saw the S and the C starting, right? So now we've seen how to use the square brackets. That is the second symbol that we have used so far. So we've used the percentage and the square brackets. So now let's see how we can use the carrot symbol. Uh, we use it to specify results that do not match whatever we put in the where clause. Job titles not beginning with either R or M. How do we go about that? We're going to copy this and we're going to paste this here. And then we're going to say in the where clause where, again, sorry, where job title like, okay. And now we are going to go into our uh, square bracket. We are saying that we want to find anything that is not in R or M. So you put in your, your card symbol. That is typically on the number six on your keyboard, uh, a shift in the six, okay? And then I put in my, what was that? R comma M, okay? And I put in my percentage symbol. So what I'm saying is that I do not want any job title that begins with either R or M in this search. Now you see the results, we have 273 rows retrieved. None of them begins with either S, sorry, either R or M. 
Now you see in this particular search, we use three different wildcat symbols out of the four. We use the percentage, we use the square bracket, and then we use a carrot symbol. Now it could be easier. It could be very easy. But then let me show you one more. So for example, if we only wanted, now we did two things. If we wanted our job titles that do not begin with P, we don't need the, the comma here. We just type our P like this. Our job titles that do not begin with P. You see that? None of them came with P. We have 107 records. But then instead of going with these three symbols, the percentage, the square bracket, and then the carrot symbol, we could have simply done this, okay? Simply done this. Instead of doing all of that, we remove this, remove that, do this, and then we put in here not, okay? Not like. This is the logical operator. So if you run this, remember we had 107 records. If we run this, we expect the results to be the same, okay? So instead of going through all these symbols and doing all these characters, you could just go like this. It's not like P and then you put in your percentage and just one wildcat symbol and you're done. So although the, this uh, card symbol or exclamation mark is there to be used, it is easier to just use the logical operators and do the not like when you are trying to find records that do not match, okay? Now we will do the last um, symbol, which is the underscore, okay? So it is used to mark uh, empty values, okay? Basically, you know that there is supposed to be some character there. You, you just don't remember what the character is supposed to be. So you're just using the underscore to be like a space, right? To help you do your search. So let's see how it works. Right now, we want to only find, let me put a question here, job titles where there is an E after the first character. So I'm going to copy this here. I'm going to paste it here. And then uh, let me remove the not. <laughs> that is done. Oops, like, okay, we are saying that after the first character, there should be an E. So what is the first character? We don't know. So then we use the underscore. And then after that, there should be E. And then give me everything else after that, okay? Look at that. So we have senior, we have design, research. All of these words, they start with some type of character. And then the next second character is an E. And that is exactly what we wanted to see. After the first character should be an E, and now we have about 16 records. How about we do the same thing? Now let's combine a few things. So after the first character, it must start with an, uh, it must have an E, and the job title must contain the job title. Okay, must contain the word engineer. So we are just using the same script. Now we are doing the logical operator and we are saying and, again, the job title, like, and then we are saying it must contain. So we have to do two percentage symbols, right? And type in the word engineer, okay? So now we are combining two things. We are saying that give me the job title where that the, the, the name after the first character, there is an E. However, besides the fact that there is an E, I also want to make sure that it contains the word engineer. So let's run that. Okay, now the list is actually really reduced to six. So now we have design engineer. We have the research and development engineer. We have the senior design engineer. So yeah, this is how it works. You don't know what the first character is, but you know that there's an E somewhere, you can actually tell that it comes after something. This is how you do that. Now let's do one more thing. We want to see all job titles with D, and then the next character is S, then the next character is G, okay? Okay, so now all that we have to do is to copy this. Uh, let me copy that. And we are going to say that for all the uh, job titles that I'm trying to retrieve, it must start with D. And after the first character, I don't know what comes, but the third character should be an S, sorry. The third character should be an S, and then uh, the fifth character should be a G, okay? We don't care what the next character after the D is, is fine. We don't care what the next character after the S is, is fine. But as long as there is a D at the first, 
S on the third and uh, G on the fifth, we are fine. So let's run this and see what we get. Okay, so basically we spelled design, okay? So D-E-S-I-G-N. These are only the job titles that meets this condition that was specified here on line 79, right? So this is how you use uh, the wildcard symbols. So we've taken a look at the four different symbols. We looked at the percentage. We looked at the square bracket to specify the range. We looked at the um, uh, carrot or the exclamation symbol to specify something that does not match. And then we looked at the underscore to replace spaces, right? But if you are doing a search that contains one of these wildcard symbols, how do you go about them? We have something called escape characters, okay? For the escape characters, this is how it works. So we are looking for, let's say in the job title, there was a job title that contained the character or the symbol percentage, and we wanted to retrieve that. How does SQL know that the percentage that we are trying to retrieve is not a wildcard symbol? That is when we use the escape character. I have a, I have a SQL script here, let me show you. So over here, uh, let me remove this. So let's assume we were retrieving a job title with, uh, let me just remove this. So let's assume we were trying to retrieve a job title that contains a character uh, percentage symbol in there. Okay, the percentage symbol in there. Now we see we have an escape and then the T. So what I've done here is that, let me just type it again, remove. Remember, if you're doing something that contains, we typically go with uh, two percentage symbols and then we type in probably the word engineer, right? Okay, we type in like this. Now, what if we are trying to find one where instead of engineer, we are looking for a new title that contains a percentage symbol itself? That is when we do the escape. So we are going to use T to represent the character we are about to escape. And then we type in the next character to use after we escape the T, which is the percentage. So now in between here, we have a T and a percentage. So we are going to escape the T, and after the T, we have a percentage. And SQL knows that, oh, the character that I'm right, I'm trying to search is the percentage symbol, and it's not the wildcard itself. All right? So that is how we use the escape character. However, I do not see any job title in here with a percentage. So I may not be able to retrieve anything, but let me see if there's anything with an underscore. There's still nothing. And um, obviously there's nothing with the Kelly, sorry, the square brackets or anything. I don't think there's anything like that. Okay, so it didn't retrieve any record because if it escaped the T, there was no title with these symbols in there, all right? And just when I was about to end this video, I got this great suggestion from Philip Ofosu in the comment asking for some uh, to-dos after the demo so that I answer them in the next video. So shout out to uh, Philip Ofosu for this great suggestion. So for today, since we worked on Wildcats, these are going to be the to-dos uh, for you to practice. So I, I'm saying that using AdventureWorks 2019 database, answer the following two questions with a syntax. So you have to retrieve a list of job titles who have development in their name and don't retrieve everything from the employee table. Uh, retrieve only a few columns, which I've stated here. So pay attention to that. And the next question is that retrieve all jobs where the titles are ending in ER. I'm also specific with the columns that you are retrieving. So pay attention to that. And I hope that you'll be able to um, answer this question and compare it to my answer in the next video. So with that said, this brings us to the end of today's demo on SQL Wildcats. I hope you come into the next video with the answers to these questions. Hope to catch you next time. Thank you for watching.